Like many couples, my husband and I discussed becoming parents someday. We talked about coaching the sports teams of our future hypothetical children, starting new traditions together, and how we'd form a circle of friends and a close sense of community with other couples navigating parenthood for the first time. After we eloped, following much discussion, I took my husband's last name, Lechner. This would ensure that our future family would all have the same surname, like we were members of the same team or one of those families with their own Nick at Night sitcom. It meant we wouldn't need to pay extra on Etsy to hyphenate our custom-made Disneyland t-shirts because we are, in fact, one of those Disney couples. Plus, knowing my husband and I and judging by our already extensive collection of annual holiday cards, we would rope our future Lechner offspring into some kind of holiday card or production each year titled something like, A Very Lechner Family Christmas, and send it to all our loved ones and closest acquaintances. It felt like a new adventure awaited us, getting us one step closer to becoming people who drink wine coolers in backyards while yelling at their much adored and annoying children. The dream. <laughs> Besides, let's face it, the world is in many ways built for families with kids. When I was growing up, I could only name one married couple I knew who didn't, who didn't have children. Becoming parents guarantees you're a member of this super popular club of people who are all in this beautiful, terrifying muck together, and it was the next expected step after formalizing our union. So a few years ago, after all the marriage excitement and paperwork was finished, it was time to start trying, which is like normal intimacy, but now you really mean it this time. <laughs> And that is when my husband and I began our stint as one of those married couples on a fertility journey. Our fertility journey involved things like trying every single tip I read on the internet, eat Brazil nuts, pineapple cores, and extra expensive vitamins, cut out coffee, quit drinking, pee on this, take your temperature down there, monitor your mucus, pop some mucinex, drink magic tea, prop your hips up, use the special lubricant, but also make sure we're totally relaxed and definitely <laughs> orgasmed during this completely natural and enjoyable lovemaking session. <laughs> Eggies and spermies are happier if we both climax in unison. Every month that goes by, I question more and more. Do I really want to be a mom this badly? Or am I just becoming obsessed with not failing at this? Parenthood seems like a fun, albeit very hard, new challenge for us to conquer together. But the passing month without success gives me more time to wonder whether it's all worth it. To become wrapped up in trying everything possible to bring a human being into this world that will ultimately refer to their mother as cringe. <laughs> I already think my kid's an asshole and they're not even here yet. When my husband and I were on our fertility journey, I became very attuned to when my body was the most teed up to be impregnated, which is only a few days a month. This limited window led to us doing the deed during some interesting times, between work meetings on Zoom, while experiencing full body aches and fevers after getting vaccinated, or rushing home when we already had plans. Any challenge we experience while trying to conceive prompts unsolicited pep talks from medical professionals and loved ones. Just get back up on the horse and try again. I guess my husband is the horse in this scenario. Anyway. My father-in-law and brother-in-law plan to visit Los Angeles while my husband and I are on this fertility journey. A few weeks before they arrive, I mentioned to my husband that we can totally skip the trying to have kids thing if they're in town during our fertile window. We decide we'll wait and see, it probably won't even be an issue, and we prepare for their visit. They come, not sexually. Um, <laughs> like they arrive at our apartment from the Midwest. They're both Catholic, so I'm sure they're familiar with the rhythm method and all that, but my spouse and I are not planning to discuss our sex life with his family. Luckily, they're not the sort of people to constantly ask when we're having children, like some folks do, which always makes me wanna open one of the many fertility tracker apps on my phone to show them how often my husband and I are working on that. I have to be careful though, because I have received follow-up questions and advice before to make sure we're doing it right. After my father-in-law and brother-in-law arrive and settle in at our apartment, we take them out 
trendy restaurants, historic landmarks, Hollywood photo ops. All the while I'm peeing on sticks and monitoring my fertility signs, and then it happens. One afternoon, while all four of us are together in our apartment, my body indicates it's in the fertile window. I should have known it would happen this weekend. I exit the bathroom of our apartment and I quietly indicate the update to my spouse while his father and 20-something brother are debating which Pink's hot dog toppings are the best. <laughs> we have some brief, unplanned downtime before our dinner reservations and my husband and I quickly exchange whispers a few feet away from his family members. Should we? What's the test say? We don't have to, we can skip this month. No, let's do it, that's a whole month down the drain. Okay guys, we're a little tired from all the tourist stuff. We're gonna take a nap before we get back out there. Do you two wanna watch that movie you were talking about? My husband turns on the TV and presses play on an illegally downloaded screener of Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> and then he and I walk into our bedroom, which is literally five feet away from the couch and television in our small Hollywood apartment. Our announcement feels abrupt to me, and I wonder what our two visitors may be thinking, but also my spouse and I have become pros at laser-focused lovemaking during the most inopportune time, so we're taking it all in stride. I scoot to the edge of the bed and put my legs up and spread them, like I'm at a gynecologist appointment. And my husband is before me, not wanting to mount or rock the bed in any way because no sound has ever seemed as loud as sound does in this moment. <laughs> Towel down, special lube on, we make what can be looked back upon as the quietest, quickest sex session with the least amount of movement possible so as not to aggravate the squeaky bed or the creaky floors. All the while we whisper sweet nothings like, this is really weird, but I love you so much. Please be as fast as possible. You are wonderful. You look beautiful. I am so sorry this is happening right now. Just wait, this will totally be the month it happens. Wedding vows prepared me for many things, but not this. As my husband makes microscopic thrusts, while I hear his family watching a Charles Manson massacre, <laughs> steps away from our marital bed. I try to visualize an egg and a sperm meeting in a beautiful meadow, or whatever those fertility YouTube videos had told me to do. We finish, thank God. And my husband gets dressed, kisses me, adjusts the pillow under my hips, and leaves the room to attend to our visitors, while I lie there, like a Thanksgiving turkey, and let everything marinate or whatever for a bit before moving on as well. Sometimes I try to meditate in those moments, but as the months wear on, I usually lie there and play on my phone, watching Instagram reels of parenting memes that may someday become our reality. But that month isn't the month it happens, and the happy ending for us is that after more trying and two pregnancy losses, we both totally agree we are done trying to have kids. When my second miscarriage begins, I know in that moment that I will never be pregnant again. I want my life back, a life I loved before I started trying to add children to it. It's enough and it's complete without kids. It feels like a relief making that decision to stop pursuing parenthood, no longer living in uncertainty each month as to whether our lives will blow up and change forever. As I see the parents around us and in our lives, I can't imagine wanting it badly enough to figure out what the next steps would be to make it happen for us. It's like we're a different version of the couple we were before, reborn as a childless or child-free or whatever you want to call it couple. Any Disneyland shirts are now for the two of us or to wear with our nieces and nephews or our friends. With each passing year, we feel reaffirmed, even if we're not following the life roadmap we always thought we would, and most of the people in our lives, and quite frankly, the world have followed. It's different, and it's uncharted, but in many ways, the fun is now we can make our lives entirely what we want them to be. And now, if we wanna fuck five feet away from one of our dads, <laughs> it's because we want to do that. 
like the freaky people we are, and not because of some fertility journey. That journey may be over for us, but our adventure together is just beginning. Thank you. Please keep it going for one of the queens of the storytelling scene, Julia Lechner. Julia is a storyteller who has performed at the Moth Grand Slam, Story Smash, the Storytelling Game Show, and Risk. She's elated to be returning to VAMP, and we are thrilled to have her back. Thank you so much. One more time for Julia. Julia.